peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So continuing on our discussion from last week, where uh, we're moving through uh, this section of the book of Luke, uh, the Pharisees that uh, Jesus was, um, was countering with his arguments about uh, finding the lost uh, and, um, and bringing them into uh, the, the, uh, the celebration of all the angels of heaven over, over what is lost via the coin or the sheep. Uh, or the parable of the uh, prodigal uh, son. Now the Pharisees, who the narrator of the text, the author of the text, inserts um, uh, a, um, a description of that they are lovers of money. So uh, the Pharisees are ridiculing uh, Jesus, and, uh, and so Jesus is responding to their love of money and who they are. So it uh, moves from the defense of uh, eating with the tax collectors and the sinners, and now he's, he's um, uh, moving to talk about the Pharisees and their lifestyle. He talks about this rich man and uh, this other man. The, the rich man is, uh, is not given a name, and uh, the poor man is, uh, is given a name. He's identified <coughs> Lazarus. Now, in the text, normally when there's not a, a name to a person in a story, um, what we should do is we should insert our names there, because that's what Jesus is intending from his audience uh, of the Pharisees. Insert your name here. So, believe it or not, in this story, you are put in the place of Lazarus. Excuse me, in the place of the rich man. So, we go through this story about, uh, about this rich man who has fine clothing, rich clothing, and, uh, and he, he feasts on, on wonderful food, but he keeps it all for himself. He doesn't give it to Lazarus, who is at the gate. Uh, he keeps it for himself. As a matter of fact, it could also be said he doesn't even give it to the dogs, because the dogs are so hungry they go to lick the sores on Lazarus at the gate. Even, even his own dogs are hungry. He keeps it all for himself. Whereas there is Lazarus who is starving to death. But eventually they both meet the exact same fate. They both die. So lesson number one. Whether you're rich or poor, we're all going to meet the same fate. And then this man, this rich man, is tormented in, uh, in the place of the dead. And he's very uncomfortable, and he's very upset about his situation, but even worse is that he looks out and he sees across this great chasm Father Abraham, his ancestor, up in some other place with, with Lazarus at his side, and they are comfortable. And, uh, and they have water to drink, whereas this man had nothing, and he, he begs Father Abraham, send Lazarus uh, on this... Uh, on this, uh, uh, this journey to dip his finger in water and bring me just a drop of water from my tongue. And Abraham says, no, 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 that's not how it works. In, in your life, uh, you received many wonderful things and now you're getting what you deserve for not, uh, for not helping and not, uh, not being there for those who needed just a, a drop of water from your own finger in your lifetime. And this Lazarus man, this, this man who, uh, who, who was starving at your gate, in his lifetime received evil. And so now he is exalted. The low will be brought high, and the high will be brought low, a theme that Jesus preaches about again and again. So family, Lazarus is there with Father Abraham, and... The rich man is there with the people like him. So, lesson number two. How we live shows us whose family we belong in. The family of light or the family of darkness. And then we move on. And, uh, well, at least, at least send Lazarus to 
my father's house, because I have five brothers, and, you know, just like that old Christmas carol story, right, uh, maybe they can change their ways, and they, uh, and, and they won't end up in the same kind of faith that I have. Abraham shuts him down. No, no, no. They have Moses, and they have the prophets. They know what is right. They've always known what is right, but just like you, they've decided not to follow that. But, 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 Father Abraham, if someone were to be raised from the dead, everybody would believe and treat people right and help the poor and the oppressed and those that are being pushed down by those that have much. If that were to happen, surely that would make them change. And Abraham says, no, that won't even make them change. Even somebody rising from the dead will not make the rich help the poor. Ouch. Does that hurt you? Because somebody did rise from the dead. We have the testimony in this book of who that person was. And yet, there are still poor among us. And we're still part of the oppression of those people. God, throughout the entire Old Testament, is concerned with those that cannot help themselves, the widows, the orphan, the oppressed, and the resident alien, the one who is not of your nation, living among you. Treat them in fairness and equality and equity. God is concerned throughout the Old Testament, the whole thing, about these two groups of people. But Father Abraham sends someone to give his testimony and will change. No, we won't. We have the testimony, yet we do not change. You all know what's going on in the news right now. This whole week, terrible, terrible things are happening to people. Violence. The oppressed are rising up. This isn't right. Injustice is happening. And what is our reaction? I don't know if you're like me, but I, I'll check the headlines and then I'll move on to a different website. What's going on with the Eagles this week? I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. I, I want to. I don't want to know that I'm complicit in it. I don't want to know how I'm contributing to the situation in one way or another. I want to ignore it the sinner. It's the sinner part of us that don't, doesn't want to listen to our God. Because it makes us uncomfortable. We have what we've earned. We're the rich man. We have what we've earned. We can feast sumptuously. Even the poorest among us are considered rich by others in the world. And yet, the sinner within us refuses to listen to the testimony that says, help, feed the poor, take care of the oppressed, take care of the resident alien, those that aren't of your nation. Here we are in Bucks County, and Bucks County, we all know the demographics of Bucks County, uh, uh, where, where we're at. I mean, when I, was, uh, when I was searching for this new call, I looked at all the information about where Jamison was situated in the outlying areas. And, and you know this, there's a, there's a line at, at County Line Road, right? County Line Road, it's the tracks. Then that's Montgomery County, and this is Bucks County, and they're different than us. We don't deal with the kind of oppression that we're seeing in Charlotte and in Tulsa and in Texas and other places around the world. We don't deal with that in this county. Yet, if we look at this story, we all have a Lazarus at our gate. We all have a Lazarus at our gate. Somebody that we can help. Somebody that, that, um, that we can take care of as our God wants us to take care of. 
Last week I talked about all the different commandments that could be extrapolated out from the Ten Commandments. How we love God and how we love our neighbors. 613, I found the number. 613 different commandments on how we can help one another and love God. But we're not Pharisees. We're not going to follow all 613 of those. We have trouble enough following the ten. <laughs> we have trouble enough feeding the poor man at our gates. But here's a start. One of the things that's sorely lacking in our lives, one of the things that's sorely lacking in our country right now, is the ability to listen to one another. The ability to listen to one another. There's incendiary comments, things that will grab headlines that everybody wants to listen to. You know, the, 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 the sensational things that's going to sell newspapers. We don't buy newspapers anymore, but it's going to, the, the sensational headline that's going to, it's called clickbait. It'll make you click on it because you want to read that awful thing that somebody said or that awful thing that somebody did or whatever it was. It's so sensational and it gets us infuriated or it makes us full of fear. It makes us full of fear. We don't want to listen to them and their situation and they don't want to listen to us and our situation. They don't want to listen how afraid we are of this, that, or the other thing. Or we're so pumped up with fear and people use that against us so that we start to fear one another rather than the ability to sit down and listen to one another. Rather than grant us the ability to respect what the other person is going through. Because we have to understand what those oppressed peoples are feeling. We have, to, we have to reach out and say, look, I don't know what your life is like. Teach me what it's like. And then have a heart that's open, ready to listen to what Lazarus is going through. And then Lazarus, also, likewise, opening up his heart, listening to why this rich man refuses to help others, refuses to heed the commandment of, of God. What is it behind that rich man's experience that makes him hoard his wealth, hoard his ability to help others, and he refuses to? Why? Is he afraid? Why? If we start an honest conversation, we might just end up realizing that we have a lot more in common than we ever realized. We can't ignore oppression, we can't ignore the racism that we still deal with 50 years after the Civil Rights Movement. We can't ignore that. Just like we can't ignore the Lazarus at our gates. But we have an experience too that we can share and perhaps create the conditions for healing to happen. Uh, this story, Lazarus, is, this is the only time this name is mentioned outside of the book of John. In, the, in, in John, we know of, of Lazarus and his sisters, Martha and Mary. You know, we, we know of that family, and, and we know what Lazarus is going through. We know that Lazarus ends up dying and rises from the dead, but people still don't believe. But here we have this story in order to teach us something about what's going on. That's why these parables are so important. That's why we are a people of stories. A people that need to learn from one another. So that we can get past the things we do and the things we ignore. So that we can live in the grace of God. A generous grace bestowed upon us from Christ's on the cross.